So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Welcome to my iPhone 12 Pro long-term review. Now I'm making this video because we're not too far away from the iPhone 13 Pro, just a couple of months away here. And I think it's going to be pretty similar. So you might want to wait it out and maybe you'll be able to snag this 12 Pro at a cheaper price point once that 13 Pro does launch. But I'm gonna share with you everything I've learned about this one throughout my time using it, what I've experienced with this phone. So let me again begin with the body and the build of the device. So first of all, bringing the square build with these stainless steel edges always screamed very premium here for any of the 12 line, but especially for the 12 Pro line, it was very, very durable feeling and very premium. However, you can see it did tend to pick up quite a bit of fingerprints and it looks absolutely gross right there. So I was constantly cleaning on this. And this also goes for the 12 Pro Max as well as it does use the same material, but I was constantly doing this, just wiping down those gross fingerprints that do get all over there. Now, some people are gonna say, well, I've been using a case and yeah, you can use a case, but sometimes you take it out of the case and it's gonna get those fingerprints. But other than that, feels very durable. I will say it's not quite as comfortable. The build, not quite as comfortable as the 11 Pro last year. It's a little bit of a bigger phone and uh, just a little sharper in the corners, not quite as comfortable, but I like the industrial look of it. These squared edges going back to iPhone 5 days, really do like the way it looks, however. Now, in terms of the actual display though, we are looking at a very bright 800 nit usable brightness display here. It is OLED Super Retina XDR, and it gets nice and bright out side as well. In addition to that, we have our classic features we're used to here, Night Shift True Tone Dark Mode. So it's got a little bit of tweaking you could do there in terms of feature set. In addition, if you go into accessibility, you can even change how the contrast looks. I will say that I really like how this one's much sharper than you know some of the other iPhones in the lineup. Not much sharper than any of the other 12s, but definitely sharper than some older iPhone 11s and 10Rs. It's a very sharp, vibrant display. And if you're looking to go ahead and upgrade this to a much sharper panel, this is definitely something that you're gonna wanna consider. It does have a very nice and sharp text. If there's anything I could say they can improve on this display, it's just to get that notch a little bit smaller. Even if they don't make it much smaller, they could definitely you know stretch it out of there and maybe put a punch hole or something. So I, I, I would like to see this display get definitely get this a little bit smaller. That would be definitely the major improvement also, back in the days, there used to be 3D touch on this panel for you know, the iPhone XS. This haptic press is not as quick. However, it's still very useful. And once you get used to not having the 3D touch, you'll be fine. Overall, I'll say this display is a very strong point of this phone. It's a good size of 6.1 inches and it's a top tier OLED display. So no major complaints. It's one of the best in the industry. So long-term, the software has definitely not disappointed. You, We do get updates quite a bit on the software for the iPhone 12 Pro. Of course, it's getting 15. It's gonna probably get support for the next five years. So definitely nowhere near its end of life. It just got started, just launched last year, October of 2020. So if you're buying this even a year later, you have tons of years left of support on the iPhone 12 Pro. So no major issues with the software. I will say that I think this screen is big enough to get some split screen action. And I still wanna see iPhones rotate. I don't know why they don't just allow this to happen. Let it rotate so we can go into a little bit of an iPad landscape mode. I would like to see that. We don't see that here. You do get a little bit more of that landscape and apps on the 12 Pro Max, but I find it to be just fine in the software. Having the app library was neat with 14. So Definitely making it a little bit easier to find your applications and the widget support in here definitely was helpful as well on the iPhone, definitely giving you the ability to add some cool widgets and just kind of customize the experience of this iPhone 12 Pro and having this in a relatively nice size, the 6.1 inch screen feels like you got a powerhouse in your pocket, a very productive little tool here in the iPhone 12 Pro. Pro, not being too large, not being too small, but still being very premium. Now, in the way of performance, we've already done speed tests on this channel with this phone, and you've known that it's definitely performed very well no matter which phone it went up against. This is the A14 CPU, and we do have, you know, some of the best engineers in the world making these A14 CPUs. So the iPhone 12 Pro, I am showing a game that doesn't really sweat any phone, but still, the performance on here. One thing you'll notice that even if when you're running hardcore games or things that 
really require more power, it tends to stay pretty cool and that's showing efficiency because the less efficient the phone definitely will start to warm up as you're playing things that definitely require a little bit more power. So I will say the iPhone 12 Pro strong in the way of the performance, A14, a boss. You do have six gigs of RAM too, so you're not really gonna be reloading anything as well. It's like a pocket powerhouse that does allow you to do video editing, does allow you to take some amazing video from these amazing cameras. It's a really strong phone overall in this respect. So moving on to the camera, and I will show some samples, but I got my mini Tesla right here for our you know camera sample right here that we're showing right now. But man, I just, I really love how this has basically the iPhone 12 Pro Max's cameras, but it's in a more comfortable body. Yes, you can't go the Ultra 12.5X that you can do on the 12 Pro Max, but you can at least go 2X on optical and 10X, which kind of matches the 11 Pro. Now the video is where it really does shine with the 4K. You can do this HDR video that will liven up the video. You can do it in all of the modes here on the 12 Pro. On 60 FPS, definitely a very strong video performance as well. Now flipping over to the front, here's where the 11 Pro and the 11 series as well as the 12 series has really gotten very good. And that is the front facing camera is giving you something that's really very much matching up with the rear camera. So if I take a little video here, what is up guys? And I flip it around, you'll notice just the way the video and photo does look. It's like the color, the way it's tuned and everything, it looks very similar, which is a very good thing when you're mashing up a bunch of videos and you're putting them into a video editor. Now, slow motion is also very good on here. You got time lapse, your panoramics, portraits, and of course, there's a plethora of other applications within the App Store for the camera that can even improve it even further. So you're gonna find many ways to edit on here, many amazing applications. I even use some third party applications that allow me to get a little bit more pro control over the camera. This is the manual camera app. So definitely a very good camera here if you wanna just kinda of have a little bit more pro control. It's really simple, but it allows you to tweak the focus and the white balance, the zoom, the flash, stuff like that. Long term on the battery health. Now I will say that the battery health, I'm still at 100 because I basically charge it before it starts getting all the way low and then recycling the battery too much. But definitely it's held on very well. And I would say that the iPhone 12 Pro in battery life is a little bit better than like the 12 mini, for example. You will get through the full day on the 12 Pro. It's it's about like the iPhone 12. You're gonna make it through most of the day. Even on some heavier use, you should be able to make it through most of the day. But it's not gonna finish with the same amount of juice left as something like the 12 Pro Max, which you'll easily make it through the day and have plenty of battery life remaining. So this one's tricky. If you do use the 4K video and you are snapping hundreds of photos, I think you may need a battery charge midday. But if you're just regular everyday usage, you're not gonna have no issues making it through on the 12 Pro. Now I found myself to get right around five to six hours screen time, but it's standby is excellent on here. It's very well optimized. So you can go to bed with 90% and wake up with 89, 90%. We have a very good overall audio quality on the bottom and on the top. Midway through the year. So either speaker that gets covered up is not really gonna affect the quality. I will say that the overall quality could be a little bit better as always they can always raise the volume up but it's very good so there's no complaints here whatsoever no headphone jacks as you know it's airpods or nothing with these iphones or you could use some other bluetooth headphones or beats headphones but it's it's no headphone jack on these iphones anymore that's been a thing for a long time audio though from the phone itself far improved over years ago iphone and my thoughts on the 5g performance as well as the phone calls has been pretty darn solid i would say much improved over the 11 series and this is a thing that often gets overlooked but the iphone 11 doesn't perform quite as well when out and about and you're relying on your mobile connection i don't have a sim card in here for the video because i don't want nobody bothering me but definitely it's very strong here on the iPhone 12 Pro, easily now competing with, I bet I think the best Samsung phones out there, which were previously just much better on that respect. And when it comes to Face ID, the iPhone 12 Pro definitely performing just as you would expect. It doesn't seem to be that much faster or operate that much better than any of the other iPhones that do have 
Face ID, however. So in conclusion, long term with the iPhone 12 Pro, there's not a lot of complaints here. I would say it could use better battery life. That's definitely one thing it could use. In addition, I would say that I would like to see all of the camera features from the 12 Pro Max be here. I don't like how they're, you know, charging a thousand bucks for this, but they're not giving you the full set of camera features like in the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It definitely can be done, but it's not done here. And again, the display notch, definitely at this price point, I wanna see some more design innovation on the screen. But other than that, a superb overall phone experience in my long-term experience. And I think if you're looking to get one of these, you're gonna be very happy with this phone for sure. And probably happier than you'll be with a lot of the iPhones that are below this because it's just more of a total package here. Find this video helpful, entertaining, and for me. Do me a favor, click that like button for me. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace. Thank you.